Hello my soccer universe! On the eve of the first match of the Women's Euro I am proudly wearing my home nation's uh, colors which is something I usually do not do. Uh, not that I'm not proud of my country but I usually avoid wearing the jersey when they are playing. Uh, unless I go to the stadium that is but that's a whole other story. No, I'm wearing this because I read today an interesting article about the fact that Honestly, I was slightly aware of, but um, not to that degree. And it made me actually really proud of, uh, the again, a pioneering status that Austria had in the 20s and the 30s of the past century. And it's a story that uh, at a time, uh, just before um, the occupation by the Nazis, or the, I should say the Anschluss, because I... As much as, I, as Austria tried to put this under, under the carpet, it, it was a very willing uh, annexation of Austria into Nazi Germany that happened in 1939. But at that time, Vienna had the world's only women's championship. And it's kind of a curious story about women's soccer in Austria that I, I quickly want to outline to just give you an idea. And I, I really find it a highly and highly interesting uh, story that, I mean, already at the beginning, you know, uh, the first um, a soccer club in Austria was founded in, in 1894, the first Vienna football club by English gardeners. And 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 so already around the 1900s, uh, the sport became actually quite popular within Vienna, and uh, that's another thing to have in mind. That um, up until the um, uh, World War II, when we talk about football in Austria, it is a uniquely um, Vien uh, Viennese phenomenon that actually got into the rest of Austria, and you know, uh, but um, never on a professional level. The Austrian uh, league started as a Viennese championship, was the first professional uh, championship on the European continent. Um, so always have that in mind when I say Austria, I actually mean in many ways only Vienna. So we, uh, women already started playing as well, but you know, never really an official status until uh, in the mid 20s, in 1924, a Viennese newspaper, partly to increase their uh, readership, uh, called that, yeah, we need a women's football club. And it, uh, they founded the women's football club Diana. And I have a, a little, the, the article here to kind of uh, keep my notes uh, straight. Um, and, you know, uh, it was a little bit of a sensation, it was a little bit, I was always a little bit also there, you know, uh, kind of entertaining something, a smile for the, the men, <laughs> the women are playing football, yeah, cool, uh, That they, it, it was always a little bit uh, part there, of there as well, but uh, that was a first attempt, and um, it was you uh, around 40 players, and they were actually coached by the then um, uh, a national team player and even uh, Austrian top scorer Ferdinand Svatos. So I found this really, really interesting. However, it did not really last after half, half, half year. The public interest was gone, and it was always about the money. However, come around 10 years later, in 1935, it came kind of back, you know, you had the Wunder Team era. And uh, at that time, Austria was not only a center for, fo uh, uh, Vienna was not only a center for football um, in the continent, but also world, 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 worldwide. I mean, uh, um, Hugo Meisel, and I should do a video on him. He not only was the famous coach of the Austrian Wunder Team, he also um, was the kind of the brains behind the so-called Mitropa Cup, which was a precursor to what we call now the Champions League. A uh, very interesting tournament that I think is way too little, uh, has gets way too little coverage at this moment, which in the 30s had the same status as the Champions League did then. However, it was only played in the middle European country, uh, countries, meaning the former Habsburg countries plus Italy, more or less. And he also instituted the European uh, Cup of Nations, which is a precursor to what we have now at the Euros, uh, where Austria won its only ever um, international title. So very interesting. There were a lot of forward thinking was happening there. And it was after the end of the Wunder Team era and, you know, especially after the disappointment that Austria only finished in fourth place 
uh, at the World Cup where they actually went out to win it in more uh, in, in in a way and even being beaten by a German um, amateur team when Austria was this huge uh, professional league and Germany was a backwater at the time, how times have changed, um, that uh, we needed to reignite interest in uh, football in, 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 in a way. And uh, to get the people back in the stadium, uh, Women's teams were created and it was more or less to, uh, you know, it was a little bit of a sensationalism there. It was a little bit of how the women try to play. But uh, there were also people that actually wanted to see the women play. And so it was in October of 1935 that um, a women's team uh, and the women's league was actually founded. It was the first was kind of an exhibition game where uh, actually a bicycle legend of Austria, Ferry Dusica, was the coach. And at the at the honorary kickoff of that game, uh, which happened in the 17th district, uh, Herr Nals, where now is the home of Wiener Sportclub, another team that has fallen a little bit by the way, but definitely needs to be uh, needs a lot of men. Me mentioning it was between the Damen Fußball Club, so Ladies Football Club Vienna against the Damen Football Club Austria, um, and at the kickoff it was of course Wunder Team legend Matthias Schindler who had the official kickoff. And most people actually liked what they saw. Yes, there was a little bit sensationalism in there, but there was also that the sport was actually not that bad. It was so much so that there are an Austrian championship for women, or a Viennese championship, I should say. It's always, uh, those terms are a little bit interchangeable, was created, which uh, was kind of remarkable in many ways, because there was a lot of resistance. First of all, the 30s were not a happy time. Yes, uh, from a football perspective, um, it was probably Austria's best period. However, uh, the political situation with Austro-fascism going all over the country and we had to have a proper uh, image for women. So wearing pants and having short hair was not only seen as un, um, undeemly or, you know, not very palatable, but it was flat out rebellion, except for sports. Because the 1936 Olympics were held in Vienna and of course Austria wanted to perform well, which actually resulted then that even then uh, women could um, uh, play there, where uh, a, a fencer uh, won a bronze medal and then later on uh, even um, javelin. In, in, in general, although this would then happen after the war, that a woman there won a gold medal, but this was all based there. You need it in order to uh, improve the image. You know, sport is always a good thing. Fascists like uh, that women's sport was allowed. So it was tolerated. However, it faced also stiff resistance from uh, the sports uh, authorities, namely the Sports and Gymnastics Union um, was not happy with women's football because it was not seen as a proper women's sport um, and kind of forced the Austrian Football Union to... Uh, really do their best. So at first the clubs, and it was hosted by the men's clubs that gave them the facilities, uh, were uh, had to face uh, fines in order to have the women play. However, the fines were not as big as were uh, the money that was come, come, coming from the women's game. So uh, quite a remarkable story. And then when uh, it was by decree, by a political degree, that this is not uh, al allowed, the Women's League just went from the stadiums, they went to the parks and played it there. Showing a lot of resolve egg, 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 actually for the um, Viennese women. However, it all came to a close after the 1938 season um, when the Anschluss happened. And... Women's sports were not to be seen anymore. Uh, women were there to breed the nation of new Germans, which is... <laughs> the problem was that um, it also killed women's football in Austria for a long time. And it took until the early 70s that it gained momentum again with uh, Union Landhaus being the first Aust women's dedicated women's football team to be accepted by the Viennese Football Union and then a year later uh, there was even in Vienna again a championship of six teams. 
not under the tutelage of the Austrian Football Federation, uh, because they were rather, rather, rather skeptical. And only in 1982, they said, okay, this seems to have a little bit legs, but we won't support it, but we'll put it in there. It took until 1990 until a women's national team was formed. And I actually would say this it has a lot, a lot to do that suddenly a German women's national team a year before prior won the European Championship. And you know, Austria, Germany, there's always the kind of a little bit, you always look at the big neighbor of what is happening there. And again, from a nation that actually was in the early 30s, very forward looking, it fell back in this completely conservative nation that we know to today that is not forward looking but rather backwards looking. However, change is afoot. Uh, the Austrian uh, women, it's not a big hype. I mean, they said, um, even though in 2017 there was this huge success, the actual number of players did not increase because of the unrest within the Austrian Football Federation, but that is about to change. At least there have been positive developments in uh, the uh, 2000s and the, uh, 20, the, the 2010s with a dedicated football academy for the women being built, uh, where the team national team is already reaping their rewards. And we also have now a sort of semi-professional league and even the um, all the clubs are suddenly investing in women's football. We see it uh, um, now, uh, I think Austrian and Stuttgart had, had, had one last started a uh, dedicated team again, and this time it seems to stick. Uh, and even Rapid Wien, the biggest club, is now having a women's team. So change is, is, is afoot and the women's team is actually doing really well as, yes, it was an, definitely an outlier when they reached the semifinals of the European Champ Championships. But at that point, women's football was on everybody's mind because the men's team had flopped at the Euros. And so here's to hoping that women's football will grow even more in Austria and that even this guy, although I am very open-minded, that I will actually um, get even more into it because I think there, there is no reason in a way that it should be set aside. Yes, the big money is in the men's game, but you have to see that the men's game had a, such a huge advantage, so many decades of building up that the women's game has to catch up, but it's catching up good. And I uh, hope these Euros will show that what is a little bit missing in the men's game, which is parity, that this is there, that there's actually a good uh, foundation. And let's hope that the, at least I hope that the Austrian women uh, will do well in these Euros. Although I, to be frank, I do not really expect it because I think repeat, uh, asking them to repeat the um, last triumph will be a little bit too much. So yeah. I thought I really want to share this story because it is so remarkable. Uh, makes me a little bit proud, but also shows the kind of ups and downs that women had to face in order to get playing. And it's not only in Vienna, not only in Austria, but I would imagine worldwide. Um, it definitely needs to have more investigation uh, on my part. Uh, into the history of women's football as well. Now, uh, as a last point is, there is a book about this league that I just checked um, that I'm very interesting, interested in reading. The, pro the, the, the problem is it costs 50 euros, which is something that's a little bit steep at the moment. But yeah, maybe I can get it at a library because that would be definitely interesting. In any case, if you know, let, let me know about the story of women's football in your um, country. I would be really interested in that. Give me a thumbs up if you did enjoy this little history lesson and, lesson, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay updated with everything that happens in my sofa universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye! Thank you.